Hey Toronto, this is Chef Ryan from The Healthy Butcher. I'm going to show you today how to make a healthy veal bone broth. Very simple and easy to do at home. One of the most common questions that we actually get about bone broths and stocks is what's the difference? The major difference between a bone broth and a stock is a bone broth contains usually acid as well as seasoning like salt uh, and other aromatics so other flavors are added to the actual broth itself. A stock generally is a mise en place item meaning that it's used to be cooked with. So it's generally speaking plain flavor rich, delicious, but there's nothing added, so you can add the flavor yourself, or use it in your recipe. Although bone broths and stocks are very fashionable food items right now, we here at The Healthy Butcher have been making them for years. As a result of whole animal butchery, we've always had bones to work with, and have offered both fresh bones to our customers, as well as bone broths and stocks. The nutritional value and the flavor of a broth is a fantastic thing, so we highly encourage you to learn how to make one, or to consider purchasing them from us on realfoodtoronto.com. So why is bone broth so popular right now? It comes down to two factors. The first factor is flavor. Bone broth is absolutely delicious. I don't think I need to explain that. The second factor is health. Bone broth is known to contribute to your overall well-being. Everything from the sheen of your hair, to your joint pain, and anything else that may ail you, bone broth is known to help. For ingredients, we'll be using 8 pounds of pre-roasted veal bones, as well as our mirepoix, which consists of celery, onions and carrot, as well as four bay leaves, eight cloves of garlic, quarter bunch of fresh thyme, and last but not least, to make this a broth, we'll be adding two teaspoons of salt and a quarter cup of cider vinegar. If you don't have any bones lying around at home, we've got you covered. RealFoodToronto.com or The Healthy Butcher carries a vast selection of fresh bones. In this case, we've roasted the bones to add flavor to them. If you have any bones left from previous things you've cooked, like a roast turkey, a roast chicken, Feel free to save them and use them in your broth or stock. Quick tip, roasting bones adds tons of flavor. To roast your bones, simply preheat an oven to 500 degrees and cook for about 25-30 minutes until you see this beautiful golden color. To maximize the nutritional value and the flavor of your broth, feel free to add extra ingredients such as fresh turmeric, fresh ginger, chili peppers, and dried mushrooms. For today's recipe, you'll need the following equipment. A 12 liter stock pot, in this case we're using an enamel Le Creuset pot. A 4 ounce ladle, which we'll be using to skim the broth. And a strainer to take it off at the end. The first step is going to be adding your roasted veal bones to the cold water. The reason we're using cold water is cold water and a slow start will actually help draw all the scum and the impurities to the top, which will be skimming away. Ideally, you want to be covering your broth by about four to six inches of water, and the reason for that is because it's going to be cooking for about six to eight hours, which is a long time, so there'll be lots of evaporation. The second step is quite simple. We're going to be turning the heat on to a high and allowing our broth to come to a boil. As soon as this broth comes to a boil, we're going to reduce the heat to low and allow it to simmer. All right, so our broth is now starting to come to a simmer. So at this stage, we're actually going to skim the scum from the top of the broth, get rid of that. And then we're going to be reducing the heat down to low and allowing it to simmer away for about six hours. With a beef or a veal broth, which is what we're doing today, longer is better. So you can cook this as long as 24 hours, but we'd recommend at least six to eight. All right, so now our stock's been simmering for six hours. It's time to give it a quick skim. Just removing the excess fat and any scum which has risen. And we're going to add our mirepoix as well as the garlic, the thyme. cider vinegar and the salt. Alright, so now that we've added the mirepoix to the broth, we're going to continue to simmer for about another two hours. If you want to add any other flavors like dried mushrooms, chili peppers, fresh turmeric or fresh ginger, now's the time. Alright, so our broth has been simmering for about eight hours now, so it's time to give it a strain.
All right, so we've strained our broth now, and it's time to cool it down. You've got a couple options here. Uh, you can either portion it into smaller containers for future use, or if you want, you can leave it in your larger vessel. The idea is you want to cool it as quickly as possible. So in this case, we're going to use a little ice bath, which you can easily replicate in your sink at home using a cooler pack and some cold water. Bring it down to a cold temperature, get it in the fridge, and you're ready to go. All right, so once your broth is actually cooled completely, what you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the fat. So there's gonna be a layer that solidifies on top of the broth. Simply take a spoon, skim that layer away. You can just discard that fat, and then the broth is ready to rock. We really hope you've enjoyed this film today. Uh, we'd like to thank you for watching, and keep in mind, you can always find our delicious housemade stocks or broths on realfoodtoronto.com or at The Healthy Butcher.